So in this video, I'd like to quickly go over the general mole balance for reactor design. And I also wanted to point out that the book I'm referencing is Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering by Fogler. This is the fourth edition. <clears throat> so I, I always like to go through and figure, so you, if you look at, so this stuff is in chapter one, and if you look at the chapter summary, it has a bunch of equations for different types of reactors, like a batch reactor, CSTR, PFR, and a packed bed reactor. And it's, sometimes I find it kind of confusing just seeing those equations because it's, I feel like it's a lot easier if you kind of, or at least for me, if I kind of understand where they come from. So I'm going to go over the general mole balance equation for a reactor, and that is the equation that all of these other equations are derived from. So I'll talk about the general mole balance in this video, and then I'll do some separate videos for the different types of reactors. So for the batch, the CSTR, the PFR, the packed bed reactor, and then a summary. So <clears throat> for a general mole balance, I'm sure that everyone has seen this sort of thing before. So you have some sort of reference volume. And so this is the system volume. And then you have something flowing in and you have something flowing out. And then you also have this generation term. So if you have, say, reactions or something like going on inside the volume and you don't have any flow in or out, then you have this generation term. And you can have all of these. So then we just kind of do a balance and add all these up. So you have, you know, that you have in this FJ naught minus out the FJ plus the generation term GJ equals accumulation. And so then you have this change in whatever you have in here with time. So <clears throat> so these ones are pretty apparent. The one that's not so apparent with how to calculate is this generation term. So first of all, we can look at what units we would expect with that. So, well, okay, so G of J, uh, the generation term would be equal to the rate of reaction, which I already talked about the rate, times the volume, because you have this volume here, so you have the rate multiplied by the volume. So if you look at the units, you have the rate that I already defined as moles over volume multiplied by time. And then you have volume. So then you can see that this generation term is just going to be moles over time. <clears throat> and so to get an actual equation for that, first of all, you can imagine that there's a bunch of subvolumes in here. So let's just imagine that these are all subvolumes. So we have G J1, G J2, G J3, etc. So then you can just add all those up. So you have G <coughs> Well, first of all, you know that GJ1 is equal to RJ1 times delta V1. So this is this little mini volume. <coughs> and so then if you start adding these up, then you have GJ equals the sum of I equals 1 to the number of subvolumes delta G Ji equals I equals 1 to M Rji delta Vi. 
So then if you set some limits to this, so the limits we want to use are, first of all, we want to say that m approaches infinity, so then we have infinite number of many volumes in there, and also delta v approaches zero, so as the, vol as the volume approaches zero, then the, then get an infinite number, so then you can write, then you can rewrite this as g j equals the integral of r j d v. So then if you look at this, you can see that this is in, that the generation term is indirectly a function of position, and so that's just something to keep in mind as you're solving these reactor problems. And <clears throat> so rewriting this entire thing, we have f j naught minus f j plus the integral r j d v equals d and j over d t. And that is the general mole balance equation for uh, for reactors. So in the next video, I'll start talking about the different types of reactors and how this equation applies to them and how Vogler gets the reactor equations in the summary at the end of chapter one. Thanks.